This is the Russian dynamite Masha Slamovich. Becca here. This is not America's sweetheart Davian. It's Billy Starks and the super fly guy Trayvon Jordan. This is the fly side fly Jalen Brandon. Hardcore princess Jules Malone. Hi there. This is the bubblegum princess Alexia Nicole. This is the Brazilian Wonder Woman Christy Jane. This is the baddest black belt Janai Kai. This is Kid Bandit. The smash hit Joel Bateman. This is Robin Renegade. Cody Hawk. Brutal Bob Evans. And you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. Hi, everybody. This is Nicole Matala, Great Warrior Wolf, and you're listening in on Wrestling With Entertainment. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show. It's Wrestling With Entertainment, the only audio experience on the web today. The trusted choice for to use all your favorite wrestlers every Tuesday and Wednesday on YouTube Castbox, sponsored by Rogue Energy and Play Out One Coffee. I am, of course, your host, James J, and it is a great day for wrestling because we are wrestling with the great warrior wolf, Nakoma Talia. <laughs> hey, how you doing, guys? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm actually here at my training school. Um, all the boys upstairs are training. I'm going to join them right after this. So I use the banging and <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah, that in the background. And where will we see the great Wario Wolf next? Well, I do have a show coming up um, this Friday, which would actually be a October, let me see what the date be. Um, October 27th um, is for Outcast Championship Wrestling. It's the Halloween Bash Live Pro Wrestling. They're also going to have an awesome uh, Halloween costume contest for best costume and girls' sexiest costume, apparently. <laughs> um, plus, you get a chance to win a trip to Punta Cana, Jamaica, Costa Rica for seven days and six nights for two people. Um, the cover is ten dollars, and advance it's seven dollars, and VIP is fifteen dollars. And to get those tickets, you can call eight six zero five eight four eight nine two eight. And when you go to call to pre-order your tickets, make sure you say my name, uh, Nicole Matala, Great Warrior Wolf. All right, and um, where can we find you on social media in your merchandise? So all my merchandise, you can always uh, message me on either Twitter, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and it's all under the same name, uh, Nicole Matala, Great Warrior Wolf. Um, you can also order custom uh, merch through me because I do handmade uh, merch. I make beadwork, cups, you name it. And I can always uh, mail pictures and everything else through the mail. And you, I believe you have a uh, red bubble as well. Oh yes, actually I do. Have, <laughs> yeah, I do have Red Bubble as well. I haven't used it in a while, but yeah, some people still <laughs> still go on Red Bubble as well. And you don't have to go looking for it. All the links to all her social media and merchandise will be in the description of the video below, but on YouTube and Castbox. Awesome. Now uh, you work for Capital City Wrestling and New World. Wrestling Extreme. Can you tell us about your um, relationship with those um, companies? Well, I actually haven't wrestled for New World Wrestling Extreme in a while. Um, I've actually taken the time to branch out, but I do wrestle for CCW up in New Brunswick, Canada. I sadly, recently this past weekend, lost the Women's Championship belt. I've held it for 116 days, and now... I lost the belt to Vanna Black, and apparently she cheated and put her feet on the ropes, I was told. I didn't get to see it, obviously, because I got kicked to the face and was out. So she pinned me by holding on um, holding onto the ropes with her feet, and she took the belt. So I'm definitely planning on coming back for my belt. I definitely plan on getting that back. Not, not I'm so fed up. I'm so tired of... These females thinking that they can cheat to win, and there's no honor in that at all. You definitely have um, um, a contractual uh, rematch for the title. 
Yes, I do plan on coming back. Um, I'm planning to come back possibly in the springtime. Um, in between then, I'm going to be working hard. I'm going to be training hard, getting into better shape. And I'm definitely coming back stronger than ever to get that belt back from Vanna Black. And, uh, and when you first captured that championship, it was in um, a tournament, no? It definitely was, yes. Yes, it was. That was a crazy tournament, too. A lot of tough chicks that I ended up facing. And let's just say that it was an all-out war. <laughs> let's put it that way. It was insane. And um, it is a Canadian promotion. Was that your first um, international championship? It was, um, actually. It is my first. What was that? How did that feel that, you know, you were trusted you know, not only in your home country, but in a different country to hold a title. Honestly, it felt amazing because when I first went up there to get the belt, I lost and I didn't win it against Chantel. So me coming back, when I heard the belt was up for grabs, I went back and I had to win that belt, not only for myself, but for my people, because I knew I can represent that Canadian belt proudly, especially for my native people all over the world. And so I came back and I had my mindset straightened. I had my soul cleared and everything. I was, I was ready to go. And once I entered that ring, I knew there was nothing that could stop me. Because the crowd there and the CCW is always amazing and always has my back. And I honestly, they've helped me so much, you know, through this whole, whole time of me having this belt. They've helped me push and push and push and push. It seems like you have, um, it's somewhat of a redemption arc um, with, that, uh, <laughs> with that company. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I love CCW, and honestly, it felt amazing being able to hold that belt and bring it all over the world with me, Puerto Rico, uh, North Dakota, all over the East Coast. I've, I've brought it all over the place to me, and I've defended it with uh, very proudly and very strong, and I plan on doing that again once I get back to CCW uh, in the springtime. Because Vanna Black is definitely my target when I get back up there. All right. Um, well, you just mentioned it. Um, you recently wrestled in Puerto Rico, um, one of the great countries of pro wrestling. Um, what was that experience like? Puerto Rico was amazing. Ground Zero Wrestling was a company I wrestled for over there. And I've never been to Puerto Rico. It was my first time ever. And it was a dream of mine to always go there, um, to wrestle in especially. And the match I was wrestling against Emily Locke and Clara uh, Carreras. Um, I wrestled them too, and I sadly did not win the women's championship belt for that company due to Emily Locke cheating because I was, went to go for the pin. She came in, threw me out, and her managers were holding me back from going back in the ring, and she stole the pin from me after I worked so hard to get Clara down. So she ends up getting the win, and I, that's another one that's going to be on my, on my target list is Emily Locke. So... When and if I end up going back to Puerto Rico, which I have been in talks, so we'll see what happens. Uh, just don't know when. But when I do go back there, my target is Emily Locke. It does sound like do you're, you're building up a, a list of people you need to get back at. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, it, it's happening. It is happening. Because women's wrestling, me personally, I wrestle with honor and respect for all the women. And it's my job to make sure, you know, I get rid of the evil and everything else in that ring. And if that person is not honorable and not respectful in any way, I will do whatever it takes to get rid of them. Because in able to have an honorable match, you need to play fair. And these women have no honor at all. They're not wrestling fair. They're cheating just to win. And this, this, it's just not right. It's just honestly not right at all. Now, wrestling in Puerto Rico, um, what, did you see, like, a difference in culture when it comes to pro wrestling? 
Oh yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's why I love, that's why I love traveling. Cause you always learn new styles and new, like you said, it's a culture, like the culture is different. And in Puerto Rico, it's so live and the energy, you can feel it everywhere you go, not just at the shows, but like, just, you can feel it in the earth. Like the energy is different there. And just being at the show, the crowd was so loud and alive. It just, it felt, it felt amazing. It really did. And they were just, I, I still, I'm still, as you can tell, I'm still in shock. Uh, <laughs> from, <laughs> I had a woman actually try and handle me a, uh, hand, uh, hand, hand me like a belt. And <laughs> during my match, I didn't take it because I, I don't need weapons to win. But she tried handing me her belt from her, from her pants to try and beat the, the <laughs> guy. But <laughs> that was a first for me. I, that was kind of funny. But yeah, no, it, it was it was great being there. Honestly, the people are amazing. The other wrestlers there were great to talk to and meet. Um, just the just everything in Puerto Rico is just beautiful. The culture, I learned a lot. Like, it's honestly, I can't wait to go back. I really can't. And that's not just to get revenge. <laughs> no, yes, no, 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 no. See, I'm not about revenge. I'm, I'm, you know, obviously, I wasn't happy. Justice. And I tend to have a little smidge of a temper at times, but <laughs> I'm I'm honestly it's not about revenge because if you focus so much on revenge, it ends up starting to poison your soul, yeah. and it spreads out to people that you love, and it spreads out to the ones that care for you. And I don't want to do that. I don't. That's not the type of person I am. But I do want to make sure and make notes to people that are in the ring with me that. I am about honor and about respect. So if you disrespect the ring, you disrespect the woman's division, I will do something about it. All right. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, anybody that's ever listened to the show knows we love food. What are you eating in Puerto Rico? <laughs> uh, I love food. <laughs> and people People who do know me personally, um, they know I love food, especially loaded nachos. Loaded nachos is my number one favorite food. But in Puerto Rico, I did not have nachos because I wanted to actually experience the actual like delicacies of like the foods that they would normally have, like panin and like all the good good food there. And like I had panin, I had some uh rice i had a, I had a lot of good foods and uh one of the wrestlers um actually welcomed me into their home and they they fed and they fed me and stuff like that and i really appreciate them doing that for me and the mother made a home cooked meal and it was so good the meat and it, it was you can tell it was like you know how people buy from stores and you could tell it was frozen right Hers, the meat and like the food that she made was fresh and it was amazing. You can taste the difference from what you would have at well in the East Coast here. From there, it is a huge difference in taste. Definitely sounds delicious. <laughs> oh my god, it was. It was like it was. I can't even describe it. <laughs> it was so good. I mean, yeah, um, restaurants, but home cooking from Puerto Rico, like, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And, um, but yeah, I definitely would like to say thank you to them again. And I hope that I get to see them again because, honestly, it was amazing getting to sit and talk with them and just be welcomed into the home, you know, as if I was, you know, part of their family. And I, I really respected that and I loved it. I still, I'm actually still in contact with them now. Like, I'll, I'll message them from time to time, just check in on them, see how they're doing, and everything as well. That's awesome. And they also welcomed me back if I'm ever in Puerto Rico, that I can go back there if I wanted to, which I really appreciated. A lot of the people in Puerto Rico are just friendly and amazing. They really are. And they're very welcoming. It's truly amazing, you know, the connections that we make through pro wrestling. Yes, definitely. Oh, um, now you are the first MWWE Women's Champion. Uh, I believe you held that title for 
um, roughly like seven hundred days. Yeah, I think I think it was around there, maybe a little bit more. But yeah, I was the first ever women's champion uh, for a new world wrestling stream, um, and the I think it was twenty years they've been running. And I was the first ever indigenous woman as well to hold that belt, and I held that proudly. And I also brought that belt everywhere I went, all over the all over the country. What did it mean to you to be the first? Because you know, in pro wrestling, you know, hundred year history, there's not a lot of first anymore. So you know, what did it mean to you, especially for a company that's been in? Um, uh, that's been in uh, uh, that's been working for twenty years to hold that championship. Honestly, I was very shocked and honored, and not only that, the the belt had native designs on it, which even made it even better. It just, I felt like I felt so proud, and especially to be able to have the belt designed after you know me like that was that was pretty sick like i've never ever had that happen before and i was so happy and proud and i i brought that thing everywhere everywhere i wrestled i brought it with me and i i like i said with the with the other belt i had to represent the native native culture i had to represent proud you know for my people you know because there's not not that i know of i haven't met too many i know some native wrestlers out there but not too many i've maybe met maybe three of them three or four of them one's in maine uh one's in florida and i've met one in north dakota and one in massachusetts so actually i know four personally so far so there's not many of us in this business that i personally have met yet but i know we're out there and i want to make sure i represent proud proudly for them especially the woman Native wrestlers, if, if there's others out there, which I'm sure there is, but I just want to represent proud and, you know, I did the best I could to hold that belt for as long as I could. And yeah. And then again, another girl cheated. It's just, <laughs> I'm not happy. With, I'm, I'm done. Being, <laughs> I'm done with these girls cheating to get these belts. I'm done. Like I might as well start making a list at this point. Like it, it's, it's annoying. <laughs> I'm sensing a pattern here, like, these girls need to change yeah. to, uh, reach Well, these girls keep trying, like, I'm not trying to sound cocky or anything like that, but these girls, they, they kept trying and trying and trying, and some people have the strength to just keep trying in a, how do you say, in a truthful manner, like, without cheating, without doing all this extra stuff. Like some people put in the work to keep trying hard to to get to their goal, and some people like to take shortcuts just to get what they want, and they cheat and they do it dishonorably, and it just it doesn't mean as much. We have the belt when you do it that way, in my opinion. But these some of these girls, they don't have the strength to win these, these belts with honor, with with doing it with hard work and keep pushing. I just don't understand some of these girls, but. You know, stuff happens, I guess. The ref didn't see it, apparently. I kept trying to tell these refs and the promoter, and they said they didn't see it. So that just means that I'm going to have to step up my game for next time and make sure that they see what they missed and make sure that these girls learn their lesson. You know, all these girls, you know, cheating to beat you. Could you maybe look at, look at it like it's a compliment? that they feel like they can't be too straight up, so they have to find different ways to beat you, like in a complimentary way. I uh, guess. I mean, I didn't really think of it that way, but I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never really thought of it that way, but I mean, it's just, it's just frustrating. Like, I just want to get in that ring and go face to face and have an honorable match where it's hard work against hard work from, you know, two different parts of the world, you know, against each other and just to test each other's like strengths and, you know, figure each other out. Like it's, it's a great game. Like I don't say a game in like not sound, make wrestling sound not serious, but it's a mental strategy game. Right. 
it's a spirit it's a test of your spirits too against each other and it's there's a lot to it that people don't realize it's not just two people in that ring it's you know it, it's a battle it's a war of a like a men mental war and it's like even for yourself like sometimes like i question myself can i do this and then i hear the people and i'm like you know what they're right i can do this i got this and you gotta keep pushing so it, it's more than just getting in there and just grappling and wrestling it, it's a mental thing too for every warrior that steps in that ring now, uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, holding um, these titles and, you know, not just, um, um, you know, holding the belt where you have it, but taking it everywhere that you go to so that you represent these companies. Um, that's not necessarily something everybody does. So what is it? Where did you kind of get that ethic to, to represent the companies that put titles on you? Well, how I see it is if a company, you know, if I end up winning the belt for a company, I'm obviously proud and happy to be their champion. And I'm going to try and spread the word and help that company out and promote the company. Because, you know, these companies I wrestle for and... You know, they're great, amazing companies. A lot of these companies do a lot for the communities as well. And it's not just having people come in to watch a show. It's some of these companies donate money to benefits or to these families that need help and stuff like that. And that's what, I, that's what I'm about. That's what I love doing is helping people. You know, it, it's not just about, I have the belt, look at me. It's not all about that. It's about promoting the company to help the company help others. What? So that that's why I bring the belt everywhere I go and I represent it because not only am I proud to be the champion of that company, but I'm proud of the company for what it does as well outside of wrestling. Oh. No, you wrestle. That's what I think a lot of people should do. No, I, like I said, not everybody does it. So that, yeah. that's why I asked about it. <laughs> Now, uh, you wrestled Alicia Edwards um, to the New England area, Mama Bear, for a lot of the girls. She trained a lot of them. Um, so what was the experience like wrestling Alicia? That definitely was an experience. Uh, I'm surprised that you brought that up. I, I, it's been a while since I've had that match. But, um, but yeah, honestly... Working with her was a lot, not not to be mean or anything, but she was a lot smaller than I expected. <laughs> um, but she's very, very smart and intelligent in the ring. Like it, like I said, it's not all about move sets. It's men mental, like men mental, like strategy. Like she's quick and she's smart. And I definitely, after wrestling her, I honestly was, I've learned a lot since that match. I really did. And I honestly, I would love to get in the ring with her again. Now that I've got a taste of what it's like to be in there with her, I want to do it again. Because now I'm a little more prepared and I got more, you know, years under my belt since then. And I kind of want to challenge and see, like, how, how I do against her now. Because back then I was still kind of learning. And she's, she honestly shocked me. I mean, I mean, she's she's where she is for a reason. I know that, but <laughs> but honestly, I know. I, I, I every person you wrestle in the ring, you learn. It's always a learning experience. It's not whether you win or lose, because even if you lose, you're still winning because you're learning from it. Right. And if you win, not only do you learn because everyone has a different style of doing things, different move sets, everything else. But even when you win, you're also teaching, which is kind of a a win to you too, because you teach, you know, because I, I wrestle some students from time to time. Some of them are still semi new in the business. And, you know, it's, you know, I love, I love teaching as well. Um, and um, speaking of teaching, um, during, I believe you were teaching the class, um, a girl actually got an anxiety attack. During 
Oh, that was actually a tryout. That was in Jersey, and she, I, I love her. She, honestly, I've, I've met her quite a few times through the years. Her and Tiffany um, are two girls that I bumped into quite a lot in Jersey, and it was a tryout. And uh, she, so what happened was she had anxiety, and she was also overtired because she had a long weekend of wrestling, which it, wrestling for a full weekend does take a lot out of you, which I completely understand. Um, but she started getting anxiety, and I, too, deal with anxiety. So I kind of saw it coming because you can see it in, your, in the person's eyes. And I kind of saw I kept trying to talk to her through it during the tryouts and stuff like that, trying to have her calm down. But then all of a sudden it got really bad. And... You know, I as much I know I may come off as a very vicious person. In the <laughs> I I swear to God, I have a big heart. I'm not an angry person. Um, that's just my inner spirit coming out <laughs> like for war. But that that's that's a different time. <laughs> but like when it comes to other women and other wrestlers in the ring, I want to support and be there for them. Like as much as I want to be number one, this and that, it's not always important to be number one. It's always also being there for your people, you know. And right then and there, I saw that she was going through a lot, and I, too, understand where she's coming from. So I wanted to make sure that she was okay. I wanted to make sure that, you know, she wasn't alone and that I, too, deal with stuff like that. And I wanted to keep pushing her forward because I know she's capable of doing it. I've seen her. I can see her spirit. You know, it may have been tired, but it's definitely still lit. And I knew she could still go. She's a strong woman. I've seen her in that ring. I've seen videos. And honestly, I'm proud of her to this day that she keeps pushing forward and keeps wrestling and keeps fighting through her anxiety and everything like that. Like, I, she, me and her are still friends this day since that moment. That's truly amazing. Now, um, going from Elisa Edwards to the other Elisa, Maldoom. <laughs> oh, goodness. You're bringing it way back. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, not many people know about Alicia, Alicia uh, Maldoom. So, all right. So, I'll tell, I'll tell a story about Alicia Maldoom. So... Sergeant Muldoon is a two-time New England Hall of Famer. He was also in WWF as John Callahan. Um, he helped train me at Showcase Pro Wrestling here in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. And so I was training for maybe over a year at that time. And I'm helping set up the ring, this and that. And all here is, hey, and he throws the shirt at my face. And I opened it. It said NYPD. He goes, Hey, you're going to be part of the show tonight. I start panicking. Oh, my goodness. I start panicking. I'm like, oh, my God, this is the first first match. Is this the match? What am I doing? Oh, my God. I start looking around. I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So he tells me. He's like, all right, so this is the match that's going to happen tonight. You'll know when to come out. He's like, you'll let your natural instincts kick in. You'll know when to run in. So I'm like, oh, my God. I don't know if I really do know what to do. I don't know if I'm really prepared for this. <laughs> so the match starts, and I see Sarge, you know, Sergeant Muldoon. Uh, he's getting jumped, and, you know, he's getting beaten up with his own baton by the cartel, which are the bad guys. And, you know, they're, they're one of the girls at the time that was on his, his team, the office, ended up betraying him and beating him up. So I seen that happen, and I was like, oh, my God, this is not happening. So I took my jacket off. I ran in, and I started beating up the guys that were uh, trying to beat him up, and I was trying to protect Sarge this whole time. And then all of a sudden, the cartel had to leave. They, got, they had to leave. They got kicked out. And then since that moment, everybody was wondering who I was. And at the time, you know, no one knew there was another female at the school. But the secret was, was Sarge was actually training me after class. And no one knew about it. So that's why everyone was confused. They thought I was just some fan just running in and everything. So then, it, you know, people are still asking me over, over a month or so. And he's decided to introduce me. And he said, um, the best kept secret 
Alicia Muldoon and I came out and me and that blonde chick, Haley, we were supposed to wrestle each other, but then something happened and she disappeared. So I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know if the cartel did something bad to her. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But, but yeah, no, that was my kind of my first gimmick, my first, you know, <laughs> journey of my wrestling career is Alicia Muldoon and kind of just branched off from there. And after that, you know, I started to turn heel because I started getting, you know, angry and everything else. But then that branched off to another gimmick, which I don't even know you know about, but it's called Roxy. Yes. That was actually a short, <laughs> a short going, but uh, ended up being called Roxy. And honestly, the the journey I had in this wrestling career, I started off as Alicia Muldoon as an innocent, you know, girl. You know, I was still I'm I'm a single mother. I've always been a single mother, and I was innocent and just kind of new to the being a mom, new to this wrestling career and everything else. And then wrestling kind of tested me and made me realize who I was as a person. And I tell everyone this when they when they're trying to figure out, you know, I guess their gimmick. It's honestly it's you times a thousand. So when you look at my wrestling career, when I went from Alicia Muldoon, Roxy, and then it went to Nakoma, that was my healing process. If you could see, I went from being innocent to finally letting my anger out, letting all my pain from all the years of, you know, the stuff I've been through growing up, it started coming out. So all that anger was coming out, everything else. And then once I started to calm down and heal, I started realizing who I truly was as a person, who I am, you know, in this world. And I realized, wait a minute, I'm Nakoma. I'm Nakoma Tala. That's why haven't I, why don't I just come out as myself? I was like, I went through all these phases in life and emotions. And now that I started healing and finding out who I really was as a person, I just started being true to myself, letting the world know this is me. This is who I really am. I'm not an angry person. I'm, you know, I, this is who I really am. I'm a warrior through and through, but I'm not angry with the world anymore. I'm going to do what I can to protect my people, represent my people. And, you know, that it's just, it, honestly, it was a healing process. And to this day, I want everyone to know, native blood or not, you are strong. You are a warrior too. And you're capable of doing anything you put your mind to no matter what it takes, no matter what stands in front of you, you can tackle that thing down and you can keep moving forward and reach your goals. And that's what I, that's what I was doing all these years. I just didn't see it. And I didn't believe in myself as much as I do now because I had all these negative thoughts, all this anger that was clouding my soul. Now that I got all the anger out and now that I found out who I am as a person, I want to spread positivity. I want to spread strength throughout wherever I go. So that is my goal. I want people to stand up for those who cannot speak for themselves. And that's another thing I want to do. And that's what I try to do in wrestling as well, is try to do good by people. So when I see, like I said, when people are cheating or, you know, beating up these other, you know, after their matches, beat up these uh, other females and everything at the end of their matches, so usually you'll see me come sliding through into the ring and I start getting them off the, the poor girl that I just lost. I want to have peace. I want to spread, a, like, I want them to realize that they're not alone. I'm here. And I even tell that to my fans, my family, my friends. You know, you guys can always message me no matter what because I will be a listening ear because I know not everybody has that. I know I didn't really have that growing up. And I want to be that positive you know, impact if I can be in any way, or at least a listening ear, you know, to those who need it. My gimmick is not all about being fierce and ang angry looking or whatever in the ring. My whole thing, like my gimmick is to show that women or anybody, not even just women, but anybody can do what they can 
um, they can reach their goals no matter what and everything else. Like I want them to see that you too are capable of doing whatever you put your heart and mind to. You know, um, a lot of, you know, forced gimmicks, um, you know, they don't necessarily last, um, you no. know, for whatever reason. Um, but, um, and, you know, it's kind of like whatever. But, you know, your forced gimmick, you know, being the niece of Sarge, you know, two-time mm. Hall of Fame or um, obviously WWE alumni, did mm-hmm. you kind of feel like more pressure in your first gimmick because you were essentially an extension of him and his reputation? I didn't really feel pressure. I felt more honored that, you know, I was able to be a part of that and be a part of his family and everything. It honestly made me want to push harder. It didn't put so much pressure in a negative way. It made me grow more as a person because Sarge has helped me in so many ways that people don't even realize. And he's pushed me and made me grow as a person. And so has my train, my other trainers as well at Showcase. Um, but yeah, no, they've helped me grow into the woman I am today. A strong mother, you know, a warrior through and through, you know, in and, in and out of the ring. You know, they, they've done a lot and... It didn't put pressure in a negative way. It honestly made me work harder as a person. And I really love my trainers for that. And I really respect them and everything that they've done for me throughout these years. And I've been doing this for about nine years now. And um, I believe you had um, two WWE tryouts. What was that experience like in that moment? I actually had three uh, WWE trials and seminars with Gabe Sapolsky, which honestly was amazing. And it definitely opened my eyes big time. Um, Because when you're watching WWE, you only see so much. But when you firsthand get to hear and listen to what they're looking for and, like, what it's like when you ask questions, like, what it's like and everything, it definitely makes you think things through and how you've been doing things for all these years. And it definitely makes you change, you know, your strategies and everything like that. It makes you think, oh, okay, so this is what they want. This is what I got to do. I got to change this. So it makes you step up your game. It definitely made me step up my game. And because of it, I've been getting more bookings. I've been branching out more. I've been working harder. I've been actually getting into better shape um, uh, at Christina Rondo's Kickboxing Fitness um, in Johnson, Rhode Island. Um, she's been, she's actually also one of my sponsors as well. And she's helped me get into better shape for, and hopefully I do make it into WWE one day and or AEW, <laughs> whatever, whatever works. Um, but she's been helping me big time. And cause Gabe Sapolsky talked to me and he said that I need to get into better shape, but he likes my stuff. He likes that I'm messing people up in the ring and he just loves my style and my gimmick altogether. And he said, I just need to work on my promos, which I have been working on my promos, and I've been getting to better shape. Um, I've been kind of adding to my moveset as well to change things up as well, and I've been trying to better myself. uh, So for next time, uh, hopefully soon, I'll be able to see him again. Hopefully I can show him that I have grown since I last saw him. Because I saw him in New York, I saw him in Florida, and New Hampshire um, as well. Uh, That's what I had those three seminars, and each one of them was different. I learned uh, different things each time. Down in Florida, he had us doing the promos and the three-minute match, and he had a QA and a session. The other ones, he had a QA and a session and a three-minute match um, at the other two. So each each seminar, I learned something different every time, and I took notes. I still carry those notes to this day uh, with me everywhere I go. And also... or two, he actually put on his uh, what's it called Twitter, or now it's called X apparently. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but uh, he put that he he does like these things every once in a while, and he had top ten indie wrestlers to keep an eye out for, and were ones that would connect to the crowd as well. And I actually ended up being uh, one of those top ten. I ended up being, I believe, it was number eight. 
um, or seven in that, in that group set, which was actually awesome. Because uh, he messaged me saying, hey, I want you to listen in on my uh, my live feed or uh, whatever it's called on uh, on Twitter. And I listened in. And I didn't know he was going to do this. And I I was happy that I ended up being on his radar, you know, and the fact that he believed in me like that. And, you know, I just, I just felt great. I was shocked. I told my dad. I told my mom. <laughs> I told my trainers and everything. Like, I was in shock. And it just, it just felt good, you know, that I all this hard work I'm putting in is actually paying off in some some way. And I plan on keep pushing and pushing and pushing and bettering myself. One name that you wrestled against that sticks out to me is Mother Endless. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. It does seem like it's definitely when it comes to styles, you would mold really well together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I God, when I first seen her, I was like, "What is that?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, she's she's tall. She's she's big too." I I wasn't expecting that, and her voice it just gives you goosebumps just listening to her voice just talking, and I can hear it from like across the room, and I'm like, "Ooh." Yeah, you can feel that that bad spirit energy and everything. I was like, I actually ended up taking my stage out and started smudging myself. And I was like, nope, this is not, not a, nope. <laughs> I just started <laughs> cleansing myself before I went in that ring. And she's she's a vicious one. I thought I was vicious. She's vicious too. But yeah, no, I, that, was a, that was a crazy match. That's another one I'd like to get in the ring with again. Oh, yeah. Well, you do have the distinct honor of sharing the ring with John Cena, Senior. Oh, I love John Cena, Senior. <laughs> yes, I've been in the ring plenty of times with John Cena, Senior. Uh, one time, he actually ended up being my manager for Bell Time, and um, I think it was Boston, Massachusetts. Um, but yeah, no, I've been, I've seen him around quite a bit on a few shows. Um, sometimes in Maine, we had a benefit show for, um, Wishes on Wheels and he was there as well. And it's always, it's always amazing to talk to him and, you know, talk about our journeys and catch up and everything. And he's, he's a hoot, that one. He's, he's hilarious. He's <laughs> very, very fun to be around. He pranked me a while. We were at Fenway Park because I wrestled a lot for Bill time at Fenway Park a few times and he pulled a prank on me and I... <laughs> He got me so good. He th I thought I. He's like, oh yeah, that loaf of bread right there. Yeah, you can you can have it. You know, it's for free. And I'm like, oh, okay, because I guess one of the wrestlers had his own bakery. You know, uh, samples of his bakery, uh, loaves of bread, cupcakes, all that kind of stuff, um, out on the table. And I was asking, I was like, is this for us, or do we have to pay for it? Like, what is it? He's like, oh no no, you're good, you're good, just take it. So I went to go take it. He goes, oh she's stealing. And I was like, oh. I was like, no 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 no. no. And he's like, he's like, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. You can take it. I was like, oh my god. I was like, Jesus, John Cena, Cena, what the heck? <laughs> you can give me a, a heart attack. Everyone's staring at me. I'm like, oh my god, no. <laughs> but yeah, no, he's he's funny. He likes to pr prank people and pull jokes and everything at shows. But it's always great to see him, you know. And the, the fact that like he, I actually talked to him uh, at the at the Wishes on Wheels, and he was saying that he's been keeping an eye on me. He said that I'm doing good. And the fact that he, you know, is saying all that just makes me feel good that, you know, I, I'm being seen as a legit wrestler because I know a lot of females that only get looked at as pretty faces and for their body and everything. And then the fact that I'm being seen as a legitimate wrestler and not for my looks and everything, which is what I want because I want to be respected as a wrestler and not just for body or face or something. I want to be taken seriously. And the fact that he sees me as such makes me feel good and the fact that he says I'm doing a good job makes me want to work harder you know so it just it just feels good and he's always a good person to talk to and learn from especially I believe it's time for Nakoma's Bazaar Adventure you're a pro wrestler that goes up and down the roads and weird crazy and bizarre things are bound to happen can you tell us a road story that fits that description Oh goodness. Okay, let me think. Let me think of a good one. Um, 
Hmm. God, there's so many stories. I'm trying to think of a good one, though. Like the top, top one. Um. Okay, so a wrestler and I used to travel a lot together, usually going up to Maine. And it was late. It was a couple of times that we've had this happen where the tire popped and whatnot. But this time, the tire popped. We were deep in the mountains, deep in the woods where there's no street lights, nothing at all. And we, it's like, what was it, like 12 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock in the morning? Like it was pitch black. So over here, it's a pop. So we had to pull over, yet we can't see much besides what our headlights can show. So we went and pulled over, and I'm trying to change a tire yet. I don't know where the cliff is near. Like, I know we had to pull over, but I didn't know how close we were to the edge, so I had to use my phone. So we were pretty close to the edge. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that happened. And luckily a house was literally like maybe like a couple of feet away. We just couldn't see it because the lights were off. And I guess they heard the pop. So the, the lights went on and we were afraid like we're on their property or something. Like they were going to be mad or something. So they came out and luckily, thank God, this guy worked at, at a garage and helped us with our tire. But we thought it was going to be one of those like horror movie scenes where like oh my, this guy's <laughs> shotgun this and that blah blah <laughs> like but this guy actually came out really nice and he helped us out thank god we went in our way a couple hours go by apparently uh you know the wrestler was driving and he was getting tired i was already i was taking a power nap in, in the you know passenger seat but he was getting tired apparently there was a dead deer in the middle of the highway mind you there's no other cars in the highway he runs over the deer oh and I legit, my butt went off the seat and I almost hit my head on the on the ceiling because it was a big deer. It was, it, was, it was boom, boom. So it woke me up. I'm like, what the heck was that? He goes, oh, it was a deer. I was like, you, you just nonchalant. It just ran over a deer and took a highway. Just no problem at all. You know, he's like, I was like, is the car okay? It sounds weird. He's like, yeah, we probably got some damage on uh, the car. I was like, you couldn't go around the deer? He's like, I honestly didn't see it. I was like, how do you not see it? It was... It was like it's right there so we legit had an argument and then so we made it to his house and i had to drive from his house to my house so he said oh i'll check and make sure there's no blood this and that on the car i was like all right cool so he's doing that while i'm unpacking and moving stuff around and i went to go drive home and the wrestler goes oh yeah you know it's clean there's nothing there blah blah, blah. so i get home you know early in the morning i park the car i go to take a take a nap I had the front door open on my house going, boom. He goes, oh, my God, what happened? This is my mother coming from work. Mind you, she's a CNA, works late hours, comes home early in the morning. And I freak out. I was like, what do you mean? What just happened? And I was like, I don't even know what's going on. She's like, there's blood all along the side of your car, this and that. And I'm like, no, no, there's not. I was like, this. she's like, there's blood all along your car. I walk outside. There's blood smeared all along the side of my car. You know, the wrestler said there wasn't. And I'm like, oh, God, my mom's freaking out, thinking I killed somebody. <laughs> I, I had to explain the whole situation. And then I there's a garage I go to a lot with my car, so the guys know me. And I went and brought it, and the guy comes out. He goes, what the hell did you hit? I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. My job went to the car wash and washed it like four times to try to get everything off. And apparently there was chunks of fur on the bottom of the car. Oh, God. <laughs> So the guy literally handed me a chunk of fur, and he goes, here, you can have this. And I was like, oh, no. And I threw the fur. I was like, oh, my God, no, just just no, I don't want it. And he's like, yeah, neither do we. He's like, we have a whole trash bag full of, like, fur and gunk. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that was a crazy uh, experience. And I got murdered by my own mother after, you know, that <laughs> happened. But, yeah. Definitely a bizarre adventure to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> my car's good though. That, that's that's what I'm at. My car's good. The dare on the other hand was already not okay before that whole thing happened. So that wasn't my fault. Let's just put that out there. It was not my fault. The dare was already down and out for the count in the middle of the road and the highway. So that was that. But yeah. Now from a bizarre adventure to probably a cool experience. Um, can you tell us about being in the Wrestle Code game? The Wrestle Code game is actually I see 
I, I never knew how all that stuff happened, like how they got all the characters in there until I walked in and he strapped me up with all these like sensors and everything. And honestly, it is really cool how all that works. Um, it, you know, sometimes got frustrating because things popped off from time to time. Uh, like the sensors popped off like my back or something. Um, for me, like moving around a lot for the moves and everything. But he's worked so hard on this game and this, the detail. Oh my God, the detail on the characters are scary, like identical. Like it is scary, but it's so cool at the same time to watch you like on the screen walk as like a stick figure <laughs> and everything. Like, it is, oh my God. Like, that is definitely, I, I really can't wait for this video to, game to come out. I'm not much of a gamer, but I'm definitely becoming a gamer after this game comes out. All right. Now, um, back to that topic that we love so much. Can you tell us about your love of nachos? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so yeah, so nachos, I absolutely love. I've loved them since God knows how long. And I always try to make sure I have nachos in every state that I go in, like, for wrestling. Sometimes I don't get to, which makes me sad. But I end up making note to do it next time. But so far, the best nachos I've had, uh, sadly, the place closed down, which is my luck. But <laughs> the nachos I had are loaded nachos. And you got to get this straight. It's loaded nachos, not just nachos with cheese on it. It's loaded nachos with like, all the good stuff on it. So the nachos I had, uh, it was actually here in Providence, Rhode Island, and uh, Bar Louie was what it's called. And I, I got to find out where there's another Bar Louie. I think there's one in Massachusetts or something maybe, but um, there used to be one in Providence, Rhode Island. And the nachos they had, it had like three different cheeses. It had buffalo chicken, pulled pork. It had tater tots, onion rings. It had all the usual toppings like the beans and all the good stuff, and, like, it was loaded, loaded. Like, it was on a huge plate, like, the size of my face, and, like, it was piled high. Like, I've never seen it in my life. No one does nachos like that that I've seen so far. But that, I will say, is the best one I've had so far. So if you guys know any amazing nacho places, you know, you can always comment and let me know, <laughs> or message let me know, and <laughs> we'll see. We'll see where my adventure takes me for wrestling, and where my nacho adventure goes. <laughs> so that's the best you've had. What are the yes. worst nachos you've had? I don't know if there's such. I actually like there is such a thing. There is such a thing that usually the gas, the gas uh, nachos, like you get at gas uh, stations and stuff like that. They're not the greatest because the cheese isn't always the greatest. The cheese is like plastic, and they don't have toppings to actually put on it. What? Um, but I would probably say some, not all of them. I've actually been surprised with some nachos at some of the gas stations. But um, some of them at the gas stations I had were, like, gross. Like, the chips, you can tell, were, like, stale. And cheese tastes like plastic. It just, it's not the same. <laughs> well, as a nacho connoisseur, um, if, what, what makes the nachos nachos? Is it the, the chips? Is it the cheese? Or is it everything that goes with it? Like you've mentioned the chicken, the the beef, the onion rings. It may sound cheesy. Oh, wow, I just made a pun. <laughs> it may sound cheesy. Cheese, <laughs> but like, it's it's kind of like an art to for loaded nachos because it's got to, obviously it's got to have flavor, but it's got to be layered just right. So when you take that first bite, you know, it's not just cheese. It's It's got the spices that blend into the sweet cheeses and it, into the crunchy. Like, it's, it's an art form. And people make fun of me when I put my nachos together because I'll be at a party and they'll have all the, the toppings and whatnot laid out so you can do your own nachos or whatever. And I'm literally taking my sweet time. I'll put the chips down. I'll put a layer of, the, of one of the cheeses. I'll top it off with some of the meats and everything, and then I'll put another layer of the chips and then the meats, and then, like, I legit, it's an art form. Like, I'm not joking. I don't mess around when it comes to my loaded nachos. I really don't. And a lot of people know that. Like, I'll get messages from some of my friends, like, up in Maine and stuff like that, who I haven't seen in a long time. They'll send me pictures of them eating nachos. Like, oh, I wish you were here. I'm like, me too. Oh, I know. 
<laughs> but yeah, no, nah, it, it's, I love nachos. Like it's, it's kind of sad how serious I am about nachos. <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> it's sad, like known worldwide now, like it's even known in Canada where I lost against Chantel, but I had the new world wrestling extreme belt at the time. And I was trying to go for the women's championship belt up in Canada for that CCW company. And Chantel won it. Uh, she was the first woman to win it. And she said, even though you got your own belt, she's like, I got you something. And I was like, what? She's like, I got nachos for you in the back. And everybody in the crowd was yelling, uh, we're cheering on, we want nachos. But yeah, that, that really happened up in Canada. And then like every, and all the seats I've wrestled in, I'll get messages from like people saying that they got their nachos and they're showing me what it looks like and stuff like that, which is awesome. <laughs> Is there a place that looks like it has good nachos, but you maybe have been been able to get there yet that you maybe have your eye on? I've been told Trader Joe's, I think it's called. I think it's a place called, a restaurant called Trader Joe's. I've been being told that they have really amazing nachos there. So that might have to be an adventure one day. I just haven't been able to go there yet, but we'll see. Trader Joe's is a restaurant? I thought it was a supermarket. <laughs> I mean, not Trader Joe's. Uh, it was something Joe's. I can't remember what it was called. Okay. Uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to ask my trainer. My trainer is one of the ones that have been telling me to go check it out. But yeah. Okay. Now, um, is there any significance to the tattoo on your chest? So all my tattoos have a story behind them. Um, the one on my chest is actually a continuing, uh, I don't know if you've seen the whole piece because it goes onto my rib cage as well. It's not just a small piece yes. uh, on my chest. But the one on my chest um, is a symbol of, um, how do I explain this? So I've always had my walls up for many years from... PTSD, trauma, and, you know, I deal with a lot of stuff uh, that I've gotten better with over the years. Um, but this is a symbol that no matter how high my walls are, it's okay to let a little bit of uh, light in, which is why there's a blue wall at the end. It's a hole that's piercing through my, my wall that's letting light in. And that it's okay to open up and to, and to go and open up over time on your own. Um, that's that's kind of my own interpretation of my well part of my chest tattoo, but yeah. And uh, uh, it, the the continuation is on your rib cage, correct? Yes. Is uh, does that continue that story? Yes, um, it's kind of it's kind of the same deal. It's just that it's more open, and there's more light. There's more color. As you can see on the tattoo, there's more color in it. There's blues and stuff like that. And it's and it's more beautiful and intricate, which is like, you know, I finally let the light in. You know, I, I, but I still have that protection over my heart, but it's okay to let it all out as well. Like, it's okay to show, you know, love and light and everything else. But you still, I'm still being protected as well, but it's okay to let everything out. And it's just... Okay, well, it went from me having my walls up to having a little bit of cracks to finally opening up and being okay with my past and that I've grown since then and I've let the light in. That's why there's more designs and it's beautiful that I've done that and there's more color in it which shows the beauty in it and letting everything in and to open up. Did you um did you have that sketched out beforehand or was how did Yeah, they sketched it they sketched it out and then they, they did it. Okay. How long did it take? Four and a half hours and I sat through the whole thing. Wow. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I have uh, other tattoos as well. Um the tattoo on my right with my right thigh with the uh, Zoom catcher actually has my daughter's name in it. Oh. Um, yep, has my daughter's name in it. And then the one on my left has two feathers, which um, not many people know. But um, not long after I had my daughter, I had a miscarriage. 
and I would have had a son. So I carry them with me everywhere I go and they keep me moving and pushing forward. And I know that I'm never alone and that they're always with me uh, everywhere I am in the world. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Is there any um, ideas for new tattoos in the future? Oh goodness, I got plenty. <laughs> it's just a matter. Of, it's just obviously tattoos are expensive nowadays. So, but um, but yeah, I've had some ideas. I'm just not sure exactly which one I have my mind set on yet. Okay, so stay tuned. <laughs> Exactly. Yep. Stay tuned because you never know what's going to pop up and you end up seeing it. So we'll see. <laughs> I'm thinking about uh, a back back of my shoulders or back of my neck maybe. Might be my next one. I'm not sure. So we'll see. I definitely want to continue my uh, I, have a hand, I have a hand tattoo. I want to add to make a sleeve but still trying to plan it out. I have a few ideas on what to add to it. Just want to make sure I map it out correctly and Set it up nicely and make it look actually like an actual huge picture rather than just random tattoos. Okay, I gotcha. It does sound like it's more of an, a, you're looking at it as more of an art form than just, you know, ink. Yeah, yeah exactly. I actually drew out some of my uh, tattoos. I, I love to draw. I'm actually, um, like I, like I said, my merch is all handmade, so I love getting, I love to be hands on with things. I love creating things with my hands and stuff. All right, I believe it's time for the colossal question. Oh, it's time for the colossal question. Let's say they're making a movie about you. Every movie has a soundtrack. What would be the first three songs? on your movie soundtrack? Oh, goodness. Oh, uh, that's a tough one. Um, hmm. Oh, my God, there's so many good songs I'm thinking of right now. I don't know which one would be the top <laughs> three. <laughs> um, God. Oh, yeah. It would definitely have to be a song by Superman. Um, he's a native artist, um, amazing artist that spreads great word, positivity about togetherness, everything else. Um, it's called We Are One. And I've actually thought about doing that for my entrance music, but some companies obviously have the whole um, thing about copywriting and stuff like that. So I can't, I can't use it that way. But that would be definitely number one. Okay. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out his music. Superman has great, great music. Um, uh, Evanescence. I actually love Evanescence. Um, I don't know what would be a good song though. She's she got such great music. Um, that and Burna Boy. Burna Boy would uh, be another musician I'd put on the list. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Is it In My Hands or something like that? Um, by Burna Boy. I love that song. Um, that would be number two. Number three for Evanescence. I can't think of. I don't know. Or maybe it's Shakira, She Wolf. I don't know. That's, that's one of her songs. <laughs> I like Shakira too. But yeah, I, de I definitely would probably pick one of those three. Okay. And we could add some uh, Evanescence uh, later on. <laughs> song number four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that we got the soundtrack down, we write the script, and then we go to casting. Who would play Nakoma? And you can't say yourself because you are obligated to make a Stanley esque <laughs> cameo. Oh, God. Uh, who would be. Hmm. Would it have to be like an actual actress or could it be another wrestler? Anybody you want. Okay. Um, um, if Rhea Ripley was native, that would have been awesome. 
because me and her, like, we have, like, the same, like, attitude almost and everything. But, um, not her, though. Uh, that's tough. Who would I want to represent me? Um, except for you, Rupi, as, a, as, an, uh, as your choice, if you'd like that. Okay, yeah, we'll put real Ripley. Might as well. We'll put her there. Okay. And every movie has a supporting cast. Who would be three people significant to you in your story, and who would play them? Mm. My daughter would definitely be someone important in my movie, that's for sure. Um, and you said that they can't play themselves, obviously, right? I mean, she, I, I, I'm allowed, you could bend the rules for the supporting cast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, supporting cast would be my daughter, Sergeant Muldoon, and Chris Ireland or Vega, one of them two. They could both be in there. Okay, we'll put them we'll put them all in there. There we go. All right. And are they playing themselves? They are playing themselves, yes. Okay. Sounding like a good movie for sure. And you can pre-order the tickets now. <laughs> now, we did talk about nachos. Now it's on to the most controversial of subjects. That being pineapple on pizza. What's your stance? Love it. My daughter loves it too. I'm all for it. Okay, pro pineapple on pizza. Yes. What's your spirit Pokemon? My spirit Pokemon? <laughs> uh, let me see. God, I haven't, I, they have a whole bunch of new Pokemon now. I don't, I haven't really, let me see. Who would be my spirit Pokemon? I'd probably say Pikachu because he's sassy. He's got a little bit of an attitude. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay. I got you. Now, we love the late, great Tracy Smothers on the show. Do you know the acronym for Doug? T H U G. The acronym. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good one. I was going to say gangster, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could just tell it to uh, you. To, to, to tell you the acronym. Yeah, I might just, just uh, yeah, I can't think of it. Go ahead. T is for terrible, H is for hell, U is for ugly, and G is for jail. Because a dog can't spell. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god. We love That's the late great Tracy Smothers. We're trying to keep the memory alive on the show. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I messed that up. <laughs> my bad. You're fine. <laughs> Weirdest question you'll be asked on a wrestling interview. Would you ever consider wrestling a rock? Not Dwayne Johnson, not the country, an actual physical rock. If I would wrestle a rock, I mean, I've seen people wrestle the invisible man, so I mean, I, I, I guess. If, <laughs> if I had to, I guess. I mean, it'd be weird, but yeah, I guess I, I could. Make an interesting match somehow. Well, just for context, this there was this wrestler named Psycho Mike that wrestled an actual rock for over fifteen minutes in a tungsten man match. That's an arm man match that lasted for two weeks. What? <laughs> That's yes. insane. I didn't know that. <laughs> he did not win the match either. Oh my god. <laughs> That's crazy. On a more serious note, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I would hope I graduate from college. My daughter, let me see, five years. I would hope that I, in five years, have made it into WWE in some way or form. Um, that I have 
gone to higher level companies, maybe get a contract with someone. Um, yeah, that's where I would hopefully see myself in five years is to be a strong leader and a teacher for the students here at my school as well. Um, yeah, that's where I, I would think I would hope to be in five years. And what is a match people should go out of their way to see that best shows off what Nakoma Tala is all about? Would it be like a dream match or something that might be coming up? No, a match that you've already had that people should see that best shows what you are all about in the ring. Oh, that's a tough one. Okay. Um, I would probably say think, the match I had with Chantel um, up in CCW in Canada for the Women's Championship belt because we both started off, you know, as friends and everything. And then we were kind of like testing each other, you know, feeling each other out. And then it got more and more intense over time. But we still had the sportsmanship at the end, which is who I am as a person. You know, no matter who steps in that ring, I'm going to challenge them. I'm going to do my best, you know, in the ring. I'm not going to go soft at nobody. But I'm still going to have the sportsmanship, you know, towards the end as well. And but it was very intense, and it showed my support for her as well towards the end as it was for her towards me. And I think that would be one of the matches for – a part of me that would show, but another match that I would say would show another side of me. Um, it was a no holds bar match uh, for WFA, me and L Valentine. That would be another match to show a part of me as well. A side of me that will do anything in its power to try and get rid of the evil in that ring and stuff. But even though I didn't win, I still had heart. I still kept getting up. I didn't let her keep, you know, she kept tackling me and getting me down and everything else. I kept getting back up and I never quit because the people had my back and that shows, you know, a part of me as well. Can we find these matches on YouTube? I do believe so. They should be on YouTube. Um, well, yes, CCW definitely is on YouTube. The WFA one, I think they are currently working on posting them. Um, on, on YouTube, either that or they're actually working with a TV company soon, I think I heard, but I'm not sure. So I'll definitely keep you updated on that. Okay. Then I'll, uh, I will look into um, finding the first match on uh, YouTube, and I will get the link, and I will put it in the description of the video below, but on YouTube and CastBox for anybody that hasn't seen the match, wants to see the match, wants to receive the match after this interview. Okay, and, I, and there's also a highlight video of the match as well, which is actually really cool. Okay. And since we are nearing the conclusion of this interview, we are wrestling with the eight questions of doom. <laughs> this is our speed round or bonus round, the round where we see who you really are. Are you ready? All right, I think I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> Excluding yourself, greatest wrestler of all time. Rhea Ripley. Worst wrestler. Oh, God. Uh, see, I don't know if I want to name names, because that, that'd be mean. Because everyone's growing in this business, so I don't want to really name names. Would you like the default answer? Uh... The Rock, the, not The Rock like Dwayne Johnson, that Rock that dude wrestled. <laughs> we'll put that as the worst wrestler right there. How dare you? That Rock is champion. <laughs> 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 I will accept the answer though. <laughs> your main event in WrestleMania for the World Championship. Who is your opponent? Oh, I am so down to go against Rhea Ripley. I am, that's like a dream match of mine right there. Alright. If you could come out to anyone's entrance music, past or present, who would it be? Tatanka. Hell yeah. <laughs> Finish the sentence. K Fabe is. Real. 
we would have also accepted taste great on toast. <laughs> Squash, <laughs> vegetable or fruit? I would think it's a vegetable, no? It is indeed a fruit. Wow, okay, that's something I didn't know. It has uh, seeds, tomato logic. That, okay, yeah, tomatoes are fruit too. Okay, that makes sense. But you are now a part of Squaw Squad, and that means a hell of a lot more. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> New Japan wrestler Tai Chi. His ring gear gets smaller every year, revealing more of himself to the world. My question, what is the appropriate trunks to butt cheek ratio for ring gear? I think it's okay to be a little cheeky, but not too cheeky, not like a thong, but a little cheeky is okay. Do we have like a percentage? <laughs> Okay, so the full moon of the butt would be 100%. So we're looking at maybe, <laughs> uh, I would say maybe 20% could be okay to show. Okay. Maybe 30%. There we go. And the main event, the last question, the thing everybody wants to know. Have you ever had a conversation with a stranger in a supermarket about Darby Allen. No, I have not. And that is the correct answer. <laughs> and that will conclude this interview. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this with me. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun. Thank you. Absolutely. And once again, where can we find all things Nakoma on um, social media? So you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and Facebook, all under Nicole Matala, Great Warrior Wolf, or just Nicole Matala. And you can uh, DM you for merchandise or go to Redbubble, correct? Correct. Yep. You can always message me. I also have t-shirts on ProWrestlingTees.com uh, as well. Um, I don't have any t-shirts on hand, but you can definitely go on ProWrestlingTees.com for all my uh, shirts. Okay. And you don't even have to tape it into your Google machine. All of the links to all the merchandise and social media will be in the description of in the video below, both on YouTube and Castbox. Simply click the link, a new tab will appear on whatever device you are on. Um, you have no excuse. She has three different methods to do it. Buy a damn short. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Doing our part. Thank you for listening. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, put on YouTube and Castbox. This was sponsored by Root Energy and Fail One Coffee. Um, join us next Tuesday and Wednesday for new incredible interviews and follow the show at Wrestling with E, put on X, Instagram, and Thread. Follow me personally at GamesG993. Um, all right, uh, Nakoma, when I say wrestling wet, you say entertainment, okay? All right, sounds good. For our race special guest, Nakoma Kala, Kaliko Yacht, Scooter Dust, I'm James J, and this has been Wrestling Wet Entertainment. <laughs> hey, folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show. Support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.